In this final recording, I want to show you how to blend a lot of the tools that we've learned in the last three or four units, templates, macros, fill-ins, to create very powerful documents. I've created a starter, so here's my Unit 5 sample. <clears throat> and what this is is a letter that our library wants to send to parents whenever their kids are keeping books longer than they need to. We have a number of librarians, so a number of people could be using this template, and I want to make it as flexible and as powerful as we can. So the first thing, we already have a letter that's kind of laid out here, but I want this to be a template from now on, so it doesn't change this document. It, it, use, it gets used as a starter. So the first thing I'm going to do before I get forget is save as a template probably do an export but I don't believe export does I know export doesn't do macro enabled templates and I need that so here's my recording support files on my desktop and I'm going to change the document type to a macro enabled template and what happens when you do that unfortunately Microsoft Word sees the word template and says oh, oh you want that in your custom office templates and no I don't I want it in my recording support files and so now I'm going to call this my overdue template. I like to put the word template in the document to help me remember the extension might help, but that makes it extremely obvious. So now this is a template. Whenever I send this letter, I want the current date in there. So I'm going to insert an automatically updating date field here. So I'm going to select the date that was shift end. And now I'm backing up with the arrow keys, shift arrow keys. Remember, you can use the arrows to highlight more. And I'm going to insert a date field. I want the date formatted like this, and I want it to update automatically. That check mark in this case is already selected. Microsoft Word remembers the last thing that you checked here and retains it. So it remembered it. If not, you check it. Click on OK, and it inserts the current date. Remember, if I press Alt F9, I can see the code behind there and see that it's not August 9th, that's a date for the current date. So if I use this template tomorrow, it'll say August 10th. <clears throat> All right, in the two box here, I want to prompt the user, whoever is using this, for the parent's name. Right, who are we sending this to? The easiest way, I think the best way to do that is to use a fill-in field. Now we haven't, it's in my notes, but we haven't done a recording on it yet, so I'm going to cover a fill-in field. It's a quick part. <clears throat> easiest way to get in a fill-in is to use a quick part field. Scroll down, these are alphabetical, and there's the fill-in. When you get, when you click on fill-in, the first thing this dialog box wants to know is what prompt do you want to use. Please enter the parents name. I'll put a colon on it. <clears throat> Click on OK. Now here's a weird thing about fill-ins that you have to be aware of. When you do this, the fill-in immediately executes. And if you type a parent's name in here, it becomes part of the template. And I'm not going to be sending this to the same parent over and over and over again, so instead I'm just going to cancel. No, what did that do? It doesn't look like anything. All right, well that's because currently my fill-in doesn't have any text, but if I press Alt F9, I can see that there's really a fill-in field there and there is a prompt. Right? If you mistype your prompt, you can go to Alt F9 and come in here and maybe put the apostrophe on the other side for plural parent's name. When you're done, Alt F9 hides the code again. Right? I already have my title in here. Here I'm supposed to insert the child's name. So I'm going to use another fill-in field, because every time I use this, I'm going to have a different name. In Unit 4, I think it was, or 3 templates, you learn how to insert a placeholder field. And that's not bad. This is pretty good, too. It automatically fills things in. So this is another alternative. So I'm going to put in another fill-in field. <clears throat> By the way, fill-in fields can also be used with merging. So there it can be very complicated. You can have a merge main document with a fill-in field in it. That can happen. I'm not going to demonstrate that. Here's the fill in. Please enter the child's or student's name. Colon. Again, it'll prompt me right away. Do not fill this in or it becomes part of your template. You don't want to do that. Cancel. 
I can't see it, but there's a fill-in field there. And then the last thing I want to do is ent enter the media specialist's name or have the media specialists themselves type in their own name. Unfortunately, we have three, four, five, who knows how many of these. And I want this template to be used by any of them. I could put a fill-in field here and say, please enter your name, and that would work. But instead, I'm going to blend this with a macro to demonstrate how macros and fill-ins and all that kind of stuff can be blended together. Initially, I want to test my fill-in field. So I'm going to save this, and I'm going to close my template. And then here's my overdue template. And remember, if I double-click it, I'm going to create a new document based on that template. Notice that as soon as the document opens, notice it's called document one, I don't see the text behind it yet. I will as soon as I provide all the fill-in information that I need. So here it's asking me, please enter the parent's name. Click in there, let's say that this is Alice Smith. Right. Don't press enter in here, because if you do, it starts a new line, and that will actually insert the carriage return into my two line. I don't want that. You can press tab, notice the OK button is now lit up, and then enter, or simply click on the OK button. Now we also need the student's name, and I can enter as much here as I want, like Sally Jane, and click on OK. And now I see the document, and notice my fill-in fields now look like fields. Before they didn't look like fields, they weren't shaded, that's because there wasn't any text in them. Now that there's text in them, we see the field values. If you mistype, you can edit this. And there's also a way, I believe, to right-click and update the field. If you update the field, it basically asks you the question again. And it's not Sally Jane, it's Sally J. And you can update the field that way, or you can simply edit it either way. Okay, so that's how fill-in fields work. As soon as you open the document, which is pretty rare, because why, if it's a document, would you want every field, field filled in all the time? But with a template, it works very well. When you first create a new document with a template, it automatically asks you for that information for each fill-in field. So if you have six, seven of them, you'll see six, seven fill-in fill fill fields pop up on the screen. All right, the last thing I wanted to do then was to modify this so that there's a place for the media specialist to enter their name. Well, I don't want to change this. This is a document based on my template. I want to change my template. So I'm going to right click on my template and open it. That allows me to edit it. Remember back in the templates unit. And now I want to record a macro that automatically jumps down to this bottom line the end of the document. We did that in recording number two and then inserts a blank line here and moves to that so that it's ready for the user to for the media specialist to type their name. So I'm going to practice this first. When the document first opens it's always at the top so I'm going to press control end that gets me to the end of the document but now I want to insert a line before that. So there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to press home to get to the beginning of the line and then press enter. Then I'm going to go up. And I don't really want this double spacing, so I'm going to remove the extra line spacing from that paragraph. And that's what I want my macro to do. And I want it to do that automatically whenever I run, the, whenever I use this template. So for right now, I'm going to undo that. Because that was just for practice, and now I'm going to record those steps. Put my cursor at the beginning because when the document first opens that's where it's going to be. I'm going to record this. I'm going to save it before I forget in my template and I'm going to call it auto new. In the last recording we did an auto open that was stored in a document. This one is stored in a template. Whenever you open a document template and it creates a new document the auto new will execute if you name it properly and I have. Click on OK. And now it's recording my steps. So I'm going to do all those keyboards because remember I can't use the mouse to click down here. So control end gets me to the end. Home gets me to the beginning of the line. Enter. Up a line. Remove the excess spacing. Done.
That's the end of my macro. Save it. Stop recording. That's the end of my macro because at this point I would want the media specialist to type in their name. But I don't want the name in my template, so don't type that in there. I'm going to save my template. My template now has macros in it and it's also moved around a little bit, but I have to restore it to its original state. Remember, it didn't have that blank line. This is the danger of recording macros and seeing stuff in a template that the work that you did to record the macro shouldn't be in the template. I don't want a blank line above this to start with. I could put one in my template, but I want my macro to do it. So I have to make sure I restore my document to the state it was in before. There's no extra lines there. Now I save my template. Takes a little bit of practice. If you mess things up, you go back in and you tweak the template until it works the way you want it to. And there's many different ways to combine templates with fill-in fields, with macros and mail merge. You can use all you have to use your strategizing here to figure out the best way to put these things together. Alright, I'm going to create a new document based on I have a new student who's got an overdue book. Double click. So I'm the media specialist. I'm using this template. And it opens up, and it wants the parent's name. I'm not going to be terribly original here. Remember, don't press enter. Enter the student's name. Go back to Sally Jane. And now my macro should kick in. Okay, And something in my macro didn't work because I still have line spacing. So I'm going to have to go back and re-record that macro because I've got line spacing here that I don't want. So something's not quite right. But notice my fill-in fields are still working and my macro did jump down here. It just didn't save that last step. Maybe I did something wrong. So now I have to close this. This was going to be a shorter recording, but I guess not because I messed it up. Open the template again. Make sure I get the right one. Okay, and I'm going to check my, okay, let's practice one more time, control, end, home, enter, up arrow, remove the spacing. Okay, that should do it. So I'm going to undo all that, put my cursor back up at the top, and this time I'm going to record it, store it in the template. Call it auto new. And I'm going to get warned because there already is one. I'm going to replace it. You could go manually delete it, but that's just not worth it. I'm going to replace it. Yes. Okay, and now it's recording. Control end. Home. Enter. Up arrow. Remove the spacing. Looks good. I hope that works. If not, we got all kinds of problems. Stop the recording take out the stuff that I did to this document that extra blank line that I just added my fill-in fields are still there I just added an extra blank line if I press enter here I get double spacing again so that's good save this now let's try it one more time if it doesn't work I'm going to stop the recording uh, because you get the idea that it should work and maybe there's some paragraph formatting in there that's just not working right but let's hope it works better this time double click to open the document that was a tab enter my hands are already on the keyboard student's name was Sally Jane tab enter and I'm still getting my extra spacing so I'm just going to do a quick look inside. Is there something wrong? Maybe that spacing, paragraph spacing, is something that the macro recorder can't record or there's something else going wrong. I'm not sure. I'm going to go into my macro and just take a look at the auto new macro in that template. Edit it. And it says, go to the end. Go home in the line. Add a new paragraph. Then move up. And notice there's nothing here that says remove the line spacing. So it's like the recorder didn't want to remove the line spacing. I'm not sure why. I will add a comment to this recording if I can get it figured out. So you can mix and match. It does take a little strategizing. 
making up my own words here. It takes a little bit of strategy to figure out, should I be using templates? Should I be using fill-ins? Should I be using macros? Should I be using auto text or quick parts? All of those things can be used together to create very, very powerful documents. In doing the homework assignment, please follow my instructions for what's part of the template, what should the macro do, and where do you put fill-in fields.